on Asia Down Under giving families options for a better way of life. A special report on the impressive work of a New Zealand aid agency in Thailand and Cambodia. Hello and welcome to Asia Down Under. New Zealand has several aid agencies providing a range of support in developing countries around the world. These days, these organisations are adopting a far more sustainable approach by providing systems and infrastructure for long-term benefit. Freelance journalist Selina Theron reports on one such organisation that has projects in over 100 countries around the world. In our world where we have abundant food and shelter, how can almost two billion people live in extreme poverty? And what are we doing to help those without hope? Here in Southeast Asia, many still live without basic human needs. Around about 78% of the households uh, had an income level that was below the Thai uh, national poverty line, which is about $1.60 per day. Philip Diaz, who wrote The End of Poverty, estimates around 60 to 80 million people live in slave-like situations all over the world. They work in plantations, clothing factories or on the streets in order to exchange labour for food and shelter. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, is one of many New Zealand non-governmental organisations working both here and abroad trying to combat global poverty. ADRA is not really a welfare agency. We're, uh, we're focused on development, uh, development, uh, looking at the, all of the needs of the community and uh, addressing each of those needs in a sustainable way. Uh, so, you know, we look at water and sanitation, uh, we, uh, we look at livelihoods. Uh, we want to do it in a way where in 5, 10, 15 years' time we can walk away and, and leave this community onto the next community knowing that this community is going to continue on the work which, uh, which, which we've been doing. It's not about welfare. It's about giving the poor an avenue to earn an income in order for them to provide the basic necessities for their family. The ADRA approach is to work with communities and build their capacity. It's not that we come in and do a lot of things for them, but our team of technical staff, be they water engineers or agricultural experts or citizenship uh, experts, etc., they will work with the community, train them, build their capacity so that they then can undertake the changes that they need to make within their communities. One project where the Thailand office is making huge progress is in the northern part of the country, where many of the ethnic minority hill tribes live. We're on our way to see a village that Adra's been working with for a little while. The project's called Adopt a Village, and one of the key components that Adra does to help these people, to help the hill people, is to advocate on their behalf for citizenship. Adopt a Village is a key project in Thailand. Its objective goes well beyond just citizenship. It also endeavours to find sustainable solutions to the problems of food shortage, debt and family income. Uh, a big problem with these communities being ethnic minority is that a large portion do not have full citizenship. And this is a problem because without full citizenship you cannot officially have land title you can't access the full range of healthcare uh, programs in the government health system. Uh, you can't graduate from high school. Uh, you cannot move out of your district to look for employment elsewhere. And so there's a big uh, issue of people being locked into poverty because they don't have full citizenship. 19-year-old Pata Mula has recently received her citizenship with help from Andra. For Pata, this is like unlocking the door to a brighter future. I now have rights to get things such as medical treatment and education. 
When I went travelling in the past, I was really afraid I might be captured. There are now more than 70 people who have citizenship. It's really helping our village. In the past 18 months, 500 citizenship applications have been made in 15 hill tribe villages, and almost half of these applications have been approved. Before any further community development work can be started, the water and sanitation needs cleaning up. According to the United Nations, 6,000 children die every day because of water-related diseases. That's just over 2 million deaths globally each year. This is the Pangkwai village. ADRA have just started working here and as you can see one of the things they like to get nice and clean is the water supply. One of the things that they put in are new water systems and this is what these guys here are digging and it's hard work. ADRA supply the materials but these guys have got to do the labour. The families being well from having clean water uh, allows them more time to work in the fields, allows them more time to, to generate an income, uh, which in turn affects their, their poverty level. Uh, if, they've, if they can work, then they can earn an income and they can afford to feed the family. Where are we going to go now? We're just heading up to uh, the water source uh, for the water system for this village. Uh, it's about 4k up into the mountains here. Probably got another 2k to go on bike. This gravity water system took months to construct. There's no machinery to dig holes to lay the pipes. Since its completion, life has improved significantly. Prior to this, these Aka tribe women and children spent hours each day walking up the mountain to fetch water, which wasn't always clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reservoir where the villagers would actually come and collect their water from. It did have a small cover over it, but it was constantly getting contaminated with pesticides and other debris which would fall into it. And as a result, a lot of the village children would constantly become sick. It was very difficult for us because we had to carry water from the water source. It was such a long way for all the women, so the children had to help carry the water as well. Now, the children rarely get sick. The water is now available in our houses. Nobody has to walk to carry water anymore. We can just turn on the tap and use it at home. Now these issues are resolved, Adra can chisel away at the more serious problems facing these hill tribes. I'm standing right in the middle of the Golden Triangle. To our left we've got Lao and over here is Myanmar. I'm in Thailand. Historically this is one of the major trade routes for Southeast Asia. People would come and exchange goods. But today one of the main things traded are people. The hill tribe minorities are the perfect harvest ground for fresh bodies. The combination of ignorance, lack of education and poverty make the ideal recipe for human trafficking agents. When people start to get into food insecure situations, then they become more desperate and they're willing to take risks that they would normally not take. One of the big risks is that uh, traffic, human trafficking agents will come to a family who is in a debt crisis and will offer to find work for their sons or daughters uh, outside of the community. Perhaps they say it's in the local town, district town, but more often, especially for uh, girls, it's trafficked into the sex industry in the bigger cities in Thailand. And so that's a big risk that people become vulnerable to those problems uh, because of this high level of poverty and, and indebtedness. 
You may find this hard to believe, but there are more slaves today than at any other time in human history. Human trafficking has an annual global market of $42.5 billion. The UN estimates that around 2.5 million people are trafficked each year, with approximately half of those being children. Rescuing young girls enslaved in prostitution is crucial in the war against trafficking. ADRA is trying to attack it from the other end by taking a preventative approach. I guess you can uh, rescue girls all day long out of uh, traffic situations, um, but unless you, unless you address that root cause as to why these girls are being trafficked in the first place, uh, you're going to be pulling girls out of brothels all day long. Yeah. Charlene Sapamong is currently project managing Thailand's Adopt-A-Village initiative. There are many people from the town who own bar, karaoke shop or restaurant that hidden prostitute in the hidden. They, they came to the village and searched for the young girl, the most preferable, the girl who are not Thai. Without ID card, they can decrease the employment wage. Millions of young girls are currently being trafficked from villages just like this one. The families and girls are generally ignorant of the traffickers' true intentions. Within the next 10 years, human trafficking will become the number one worldwide earner for organised crime. The Adopt-A-Village project really helps these hill tribes fight against trafficking. The project costs around $20,000 per year and usually takes around three years to complete. The project also enables volunteers to be on the lookout to see if there are any young girls who are vulnerable targets. Yes, the program is also linked to another project we have, which is the Keep Girls Safe project. So if children are at extreme risk, uh, where families have taken the offer of traffickers, then children can be removed from a, a very at-risk family and placed in a shelter until such times as the family is then out of that vulnerable situation.